Vietnam has experienced a tremendous economic transformation over the past decade, and perhaps the one area where this has been most visible is in exports. Exports have risen tenfold between 2000 and 2013 to $132 billion. The, their share in GDP has also risen now to 77% of GDP. With the exception of trade hubs, Hong Kong and Singapore, Vietnam now is the most export-dependent economy in Asia. Also very important to note is that the structure of these exports has changed. Uh, we've seen a tremendous value escalation and move up the value chain. What I mean by that, in 1995, the composition of Vietnamese exports was roughly 75% primary items such as uh, rice, fisheries, petroleum and other commodities and only 30% manufactured goods. Now that split has reversed. So not only are manufactured goods now the most important exports that um, Vietnamese sends abroad, but even within manufacturing, we've seen a value escalation so that it's no longer primarily textiles and footwear, but electronics, telephones, and spare parts, so um, higher value um, items. There are both specific and non-specific factors underpinning Vietnam's economic transformation. The most important country-specific factor is Vietnam's accession to the World Trade Organization in 2007. This basically engaged Vietnam fully into world trade and ignited a wave of investor uh, interest towards the country and as well as unleashing a um, huge amount of foreign direct investment. Um, why has this been important? Because foreign invested companies actually have driven the move up the value chain in Vietnam. Um, they have facilitated know-how and technology transfer and have um, allowed this transformation to happen. In addition, there are some general trends in the global economy that have played out in Vietnam's favor. Specifically here, I'm talking about demographic changes elsewhere in Asia with population aging in some of Asia's more mature markets, Korea, Japan, um, even China, as well as higher wages in other parts of Asia. So both from a purely labor availability perspective as well as a labor cost perspective, Vietnam has emerged as an attractive uh, destination for global manufacturing firms. Foreign direct investment has played a critical role in facilitating this economic transformation in Vietnam. And you can see that by looking at the structure of the economy, foreign invested firms account for about 16% of overall GDP, but more than 60% of exports. So what this tells you is that this is where export competitiveness lies within the economy. These are the companies that can compete globally, um, that have brought in process enhancements and efficiency improvements, and this, they have been, become a catalyst for transformation in the broader economy. There are some interesting trends in, F, in foreign direct investment flows, actually. Um, most importantly, um, a lot of this FDI is coming from other parts of Asia. Last year, for instance, seven out of the ten uh, sources of FDI were countries um, located in Asia. And surprisingly, the United States is not anywhere in the top 10. So this raises the question whether U US firms somehow are missing out on an opportunity here. Are they not fully engaging Vietnam in global sourcing strategies? Is this something that they should be looking closer at? The success of Vietnam's exports and manufacturing sector should not obscure the fact that some challenges remain. Um, for instance, the infrastructure uh, system needs significant upgrades to keep up with growing demand. 
Vietnam still has some macroeconomic vulnerabilities. This is a country that has experienced sort of a boom-bust uh, kind of development cycle, and that's something that needs to be overcome to ensure stability. And then the banking sector is one um, problem area. Um, this is where we need to see more aggressive move to handle non-performing loans, to clean up uh, the balance sheets and so on. And finally, I would mention state-owned enterprises. This uh, can be seen both as a challenge as well as an opportunity. Uh, state-owned enterprises are not particularly efficient, um, but we, you know, if um, privatization efforts accelerate, which is what IHS actually expects to happen, we could see a tremendous unleashing of um, productivity gains over the next three to five years.